In this video, we're going to tie an EP crab, but we're going to tie it with a brush. Um, this way is a little bit faster and a little bit easier, um, but can also be quite messy, just like the original way of stacking the fibers. Uh, so we'll start here with a Gamagatsu SL113H in a size 1 or a 2. We're just going to start with some 6 aught fluorescent chartreuse thread. And we're just going to start it right up here by the eye. And then we're going to take a pair of medium or large plain lead eyes. And we're just going to start these right up by the front of the hook here. And I just kind of do some X wraps around those eyes and kind of center them right so they're centered on the hook and then I'll do some wraps underneath to kind of tighten those X wraps it'll kind of pinch those together and really tighten the eyes down. I'll do that a few times you can also use some super glue in between these steps and that'll really help lash down those eyes there we are once you have your eyes nice and secure, we can take our thread here. We're just going to wrap down the shank of the hook. It doesn't have to be pretty, but if you're like me, you like it to look somewhat even. And we'll go just a little ways here down the bend. Kind of have to dodge the hook point here at this point. And we're ready for a little bit of flash. We're going to take a couple strands of pearl midge flash, some really fine flash. You can do up to three pieces. We're just going to take this flash and we're going to tie it in on each side of the hook. So I'll just take my two or three strands there, tie it on one side, and I'll just take my other two or three strands here and pull it to my near side. and our crystal flash is secured. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some grizzly colored mini marabou also known as chickaboo. It's a nice fine fluffy marabou. I'm going to pull a few fibers here from a patch. You can see they come off the patch all uneven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fiber by fiber here. I'm going to start with one. I'll take a second and I'll just line it up with the other one. Then bunch them together and I'll take a third. Slide it down till they're even. And I'll take a fourth. Slide it down till it's even. And really what we want to end up with is a nice fluffy clump. And it depends on the size of the feathers that you started with, depending on how many you need to use. So the larger and fluffier the feather, of course, the fewer of the fibers you need to use. So once I get my fibers here all fluffed up, and what I found is you usually want to use at least three even if they're fairly big I found that three seems to do the job pretty good if you have a bunch of smaller fibers that aren't quite as full and fluffy sometimes you'll need five or so so there we go what we end up with is a nice fluffy clump and we want this tail or claw, I should say, because this will basically be the claws of the crab, about the length of the shank of the hook. So I just measure it out there, and I'm just going to tie it in with a few nice, tight, and secure wraps. And I'll wrap down the shank of the hook while I'm still holding this clump nice and tight, all the way to where I tied in that crystal flash, and then I can stop. And there is my tail. 
And then I can get in here and just trim out my marabou feathers nice and carefully. And I can wrap a few wraps through that mess just to kind of secure it. And I'll just kind of wrap a few wraps kind of transitioning from that bump. And don't worry too much about the looks of it because we're going to cover that all up with our brush. Then you could trim your crystal flash. I like to trim it just longer than the tail. Now we can tie in our brush. So I'm just going to take my brush here. And you have your little wire nub there. And we're just going to tie in on that little wire nub. And I'll wrap my thread all the way, kind of covering that entire piece of wire. You really want to make sure this is secure, nice tight wraps. Now I'm going to take my thread and I want to mark the area where I'm going to tie in my first rubber leg. So I'm just going to take my thread and I want to hang it right about on the point of the hook. Um, just maybe behind it and that will be my first rubber leg tie in point. Now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to lay down my first wrap with it. Now this is the point where you kind of take your time. So I have a little brush handy. And I just kind of go in here and pluck out some of those fibers every once in a while and make sure I'm not trapping any of them. And then I just continue to wrap this brush forward. Making sure you can also use a bodkin if you don't have a brush, just a needle. And that will also help you pluck out fibers that are trapped. And I've tied these a lot faster and not worried about plucking the fibers out and they turn out okay but usually you can kind of see a few trapped clumps and that always bothers me when you spend this much time on a fly sometimes it really benefits you to just take your time especially on such a durable fly like this that you're really gonna fish for the entire day or several days if you don't lose it. These flies, once you super glue them, this EP fiber is extremely durable stuff. So it's best to put the time in early on. It's not like a trout fly where you can crank it out in two seconds. These take a little bit of time. Now I got to my stopping point where I hung my thread and we're ready for the first leg. Now you can use a few different types of legs for this. You can use uh, loco legs, which is what we're going to use today. You can use silly legs. Any type of a silicone leg with a little bit of glitter in there works just fine. And you want to tie these in nice and long. So I'll tie these in almost three inches long. That way, <clears throat> when I'm trimming the crab, I have somewhere to grab on the leg and pull it out of the way. Because you don't want to trim these legs when you're trimming the body. That can be a real bummer. You do all that work on this fly, you tie in all those legs and you accidentally trim them out with your scissors. So leave a really long rubber leg and I just tie a strand of rubber leg on each side of the fly with a long part of the leg hanging off the back of the fly. And then I just trim the little short piece near the front of the fly there. And really make sure they're secure you want them tied in centered so that each rubber leg is at the same point on the shank of the hook as far as evenness. And then you can take your thread about the halfway point in between where you just tied in that leg and your eyes. Now I'm going to pull my brush back here. This wire brush you can just kind of lay it back on your vise, kind of kink it. Since it's wire it can kind of stay put. But when you go to grab it again and start wrapping, just make sure it's nice and tight. Pull it taut real quick. And then you can continue wrapping with your brush. One wrap each right in front of the other. Nice, tight, dense wraps. Get out your brush if you trap a few of them. It 
it's almost impossible to not trap some so it happens at the end you can brush it out again that'll help really free up some of those fibers that you accidentally trapped but this way you can see I'm really laying down material pretty quickly if you stack these fibers one by one which is kind of the original way it can take a fair amount of time you actually have a little more control doing it that way because you can really lay those fibers right where you want but uh, I would say it takes at least twice as long to do so and it's a little bit messier so this is a good kind of beginner or quick way to learn how to tie these EP crabs okay now I got to my next spot on the shank of the hook and again we're just going to repeat the process with those legs and I'll do this three times there's basically three sets of legs which makes for a total of six legs one on each side so three sets of legs just be careful when you tie them in nice and long hanging off the back there give you something to grab onto make sure they're nice and centered And we can take our thread almost all the way up to the eye here and we'll do a few more wraps with our brush and I trapped a few fibers there, there we go that brush really really helps quite a bit when it comes to freeing up trapped fibers it's just a simple little dubbing brush Once we get towards the front, I want to leave some space behind those lead eyes for a wrap or two with my dubbing brush. So once I get close, I'll just take it and pull it out of the way. And I want to leave that little bit of space there for my legs. So I'll take my last set of legs here. I'm just going to tie those in. And towards the end here, you it can get a little bit crazy just because you have all this brush plus your two sets of legs at the back and you're a little bit crowded up here at the eye. So just kind of take your time slowly work it kind of pull the rubber legs out of the way you really don't want to rush it or make a mistake here towards the end and you can see I left that space and I'll take my thread all the way up behind her, I should say, yeah, behind those eyes. Continue with my brush with a wrap or two. So we can definitely fit one there. Let's see if we can maybe sneak one more in. Got to be careful you don't crowd it too much. I do have one more little spot there. All right. Now that we have our brush finished, I'm just going to take my thread and I'm just going to sneak a thread wrap in there. you got to be careful to kind of split some of the fibers and just kind of sneak it down in there. Then you can get in with your wire cutters and trim out the last of the brush and any of the fibers that go with it. And I'm going to peel back all the fibers and lay down some nice tight wraps right behind those eyes. Then you can lay down a bit of glue 
and we're going to whip finish. We're not quite done yet, but this whip finish is just going to finish me off here so I can trim the fly. And then you can take the fly off the vise and begin to trim. But when you trim, you can see here we just have a big fluff ball. You can take your brush and kind of carefully stand those fibers up and really make sure none of those fibers are trapped. We did a pretty pretty good job here as far as not trapping too many fibers. You can see it's just one big fluff ball. Really looks like a mess. But now you can see how long my legs are. You kind of want to draw them either down or up depending on where you want to start. I usually start on the bottom. So I draw them to the top of the fly. I have the fly upside down here. And then I'll come in here with my scissors and I'll trim a flat plane on the bottom. And I'll flip it over and I'll trim a flat part on the top. So let's see if I can do this here on camera. Maybe I'll just do one side or the other. So I pull my legs down to the top of the fly, stand up all the fibers here, come in with my scissors. I like to use like a long bladed scissor. So either like a, a razor scissor, a hair scissor, something like that. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim kind of a flat portion on the underside of the fly. Now you also have to be careful of your tail. So I'll kind of pull the tail out of the way and continue to trim a little flat base and it can be a little messy. What I actually like to do is do it kind of over my tra over the trash can. That's the easiest way to kind of contain the, the mess. And you can see what I've got there is a nice flat bottom on the fly. Now you're going to do the same exact thing on the top of the fly. And you're just going to basically reverse the legs. So I'm going to flip the fly over, carefully take these legs and work them down to the bottom. I've trimmed these legs before on accident and it's kind of frustrating. A few swear words might be involved because um, you did all that work and you trimmed those legs out of there. So really be careful. Make sure you got all six, you know, count them, all six legs there at the bottom. Now we're going to do the same thing here on the top of the fly. So I'm just going to work my way from the front to the back, trimming the tops of those fibers. And then when you get towards the tail, once again, make sure you don't trim the tail. So we'll kind of separate the brush fibers from the feather fibers here. you should end up with. Let me get it all cleaned up here for you. It is a flat little a flat little pancake. Flat on the top, flat on the bottom. And now we can trim the sides. So again, this is the real tricky part because you don't want to trim those legs. So you have to separate those legs from any of the side fibers. And then what you want to do is kind of hold the fly like that so that the side fibers are all exposed and you can kind of pull them out with your fingers and you have the legs all down there in your hand. 
So once I have the side fibers all kind of corralled here, we can trim the side of our crab. So I'm just going to trim it at an angle with the eyes being the short part and getting kind of gradually longer as I go back to the back of the fly. So I'll just kind of trim the side. I'll kind of try to round the fibers a little bit here. And you'll get a little body like that. Now you got to do the same exact thing on the other side. You got to try to kind of match the curve or the size and shape of the body that we just we just did. That can be kind of the tricky part. So again, separate the fibers or the legs from the fibers. Kind of exposing your little your little body. trim and get it as even as you possibly can. It's not always perfect. Even the ones I've seen come from EP himself, I mean it's never never perfect. These are all hand tied, they're all a little different. So just get it as close as you can. One side is always a little off, so what you do is you trim the one that's a little bit longer and take it down to the size of the one that's a little bit shorter. There we go, and that's pretty even. Now, there's always a few stray fibers. You can see I found some there near the tail. Just try to get those to fall in line with the body. And then, you can trim the legs. So how I trim the legs, I just pull them all down and I trim them pretty long. I like my legs fairly long on this fly, so then I just trim them all together. And then you can get them to kind of fall back in line with the body. So you just kind of work them back into the fibers. And you can see there's a few stray fibers here on the underside, so just get in there, trim those out. Careful not to nick your legs. And that is essentially a finished EP crab. There's one more thing that we have to do, and that's to tie in the weed guard. Oopsie. So let's get this fly in the vise here. And blow off any of the fibers. We can always clean it up after the fact here, but I'm just going to show you how to tie in weed guard. So we're going to take our chartreuse thread here, tie it in, take some 20 pound mono, try to get a fairly straight piece off the spool, I take that piece of 20 pound mono and I fold it in half. So that there's a little loop on the top of it. Take that piece of mono, very loose wraps. One, two, three, four. Oh, let's do that over again and start here at the front. One, two, three, four, five. Fairly loose wraps. Pull down on the weed guard. And get my trash can here out of here, out of my way. It was sitting here on my lap. Let's try that again. The trash can got in my way. All right. Pinch them together. One, two, three, four, five. Pull down and lay down a few more tight wraps. Now you can see that weed guard's cocked to the back of the fly. I invert the fly, pull the weed guard forward, 
and lay some wraps right behind the weed guard. This will help pull that mono forward. And center it right there in the middle of the fly. Then all you need to do is just pull them down to the hook point. And there is your perfect little weed guard. Then you can whip finish. And then finish with some Zappa Gap glue here. And that will make this fly very, very durable. This is a great fly for permit. Redfish, bonefish, basically anything that eats a crab. And that is an EP crab tied brush style.